Any interesting uh, stories or tidbits of memory from decking all the way up to the wheelhouse? Not really interesting. I never did mind. I never did mind um, always working on a project. Um, the end result, the bottom line for me is offshore and inland. You get to work with equipment that you're probably never going to be able to afford in your lifetime. The, the just, just the, the magnitude or the size of, of the machinery that they use to accomplish their goals is, is far more expensive and larger than you will ever be able to attain or really necessarily ever need. So I always felt like learning not only just being able to tinker around with stuff like that, but learning from other people that knew a few things about it was an incredible opportunity. I, I don't know to what end necessarily, but I just felt like that's a privilege. You know what I mean? And you're picking up free knowledge from some old pros, you know, some guys come around, even, even if it's just a mechanic that steps on the boat, you know, 65 year old grumpy as shit and just wants to know where the coffee is and scratch his ass, but go spend, you know, two hours with him down in the engine room and you're going to walk out knowing 20 more things than the captain does. If you just pay attention. And then there's some people that just go out there and float around and hope to get a check, you know, but I, I just feel like there's a lot of opportunity out there once you've done it for a while, because you're learning the whole boat, every system, the air system, the oil system, the, the cooling system, the water you're learning. Um, it's got regular features like a house would like AC units and Duckworth and walk, washers and dryers and appliances. Like you're just learning how to deal with septic systems. Like you're just learning how things work and how to service them and what typical uh, breakages they experience. It just, it's just a wealth of knowledge, really, if you pay attention, you know. Um, no specific stories, like no crazy exciting stuff, really. Um, that was kind of saved for the offshore experiences, I guess. Things kind of got wild out there, but uh, but I, I don't I don't feel like uh, as far as the deck goes, nothing crazy, but just a, a lot of hard work and lots to learn, and um, I don't know, I wouldn't I wouldn't give it up for the world, you know what I mean? I don't think that um, me as a captain, anybody deserves to be a captain unless they've sweated it out on the deck for years, you know, but um. I guess I've stuck with it all this time because uh, I was never, I never shied away from hard work. And I, I like, I like uh, the grit. You know what I mean? You get it done by any means necessary or shut the fuck up, you know? Roger. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to tell me where you've been and what you did because it's going to show in the calluses in your hands or what you do next or like all those things. There's no, you can't, bull, there's a lot of bullshitters out there. I won't say that, but you can't bullshit me. And it's not because I got a crystal ball. It's because I've been out there, you know? Right. How long have you been out there? Uh, right, man. You, you asked me that earlier. So I had to tally it up. Inland, inland, I think will be, uh, I think March makes 13 years. And then offshore, I worked for Tidewater for about five years. So it'll be 18 years uh, in the next couple months. How long were you on deck before you started moving up? And did you make a stop with the engineers? No. Um, I had two choices, man. I sized that up when I was working offshore. And I was like, man... I'd go down in the engine room because even on a deck level working offshore, you have a choice. You can you can uh, decide to be an oiler, which is basically an engineer's helper, or you can decide to work the deck. Um, it's two different departments. The deck and the wheelhouse uh, co-mingle, and the engineering is kind of unto itself. And I'd go down in the engine room occasionally, and 
it was just hot and shitty down there, man. It was hot and shitty, and I looked around, and I'm like, y'all are under the water right now. <laughs> y'all are going to be the first to go and the last to know. And um, I saw the way that the, the captains lived. And they, they're kind of equivalent if you want to establish a pecking order, the engineer and the captain, when it comes to offshore. Um, but, I mean, if you look at the conditions that you work in, in the wheelhouse as opposed to the engine room, you got to really love engines to want to dive down there. You know what I mean? So I I decided early on that I was, I was going to shoot for the wheelhouse, you know? Um, And for the longest time, I felt like it wasn't real life. That's what I used to say. I would say this ain't real life. This is just work. Real life starts when you get back to your house, you know? But I realized over time that you spend so much of your time out there. If you keep calling it that, then you're ne- kind of negating the majority of your life. The existence of the majority of your life, you're just not putting anything into it or you're just doing enough to get by, you know? And it, it kind of made me feel like if you're going to spend all this time out here, uh, number one, yeah, it's real life and you better start looking at it like that. And number two, if you don't shoot for the top, then you're just bullshitting yourself, you know? So, um. I don't remember what your question was. It kind of went off on a tangent there. It was how long, primarily how long were you on deck before you moved on up? Oh, right. Offshore, I spent that entire time on deck. I had started talking to people in the office, um, this same guy. I kept talking to him in the office about uh, starting my steersman course. Uh, I had acquired some of the books to study and workbooks and things of that nature. But I, I worked on deck the whole time that I was offshore. So that's five years. And then when I started inland, as I said, it was kind of like starting over. So I ended up decking inland for an additional between five and six years. So all told, roughly 10 years I spent on deck offshore and inland. Was there a steersman program when you moved up? Uh, when I finally moved up, there was a steersman program um, when I was working inland, and uh, it was, was kind of ass backwards. It, it seemed like uh, good old boy mentality because I would keep in touch with some of the people that came up alongside of me as far as when we got hired on and what our job status was, positions. And, you know, they'd get off the phone with the office and then call me or vice versa and would be getting told the same thing. You know, like, oh, you're, you're number two or you're number three in line. You're like, damn, he told me I was number three. In line. And, you know, the the leadership of the steersman program changed hands um, quite a few times just during the the uh, the window where I was, I guess you could say, eligible. And um, so it became hard to establish any kind of working relationship, so to speak, with anybody that was heading up the program, because before long, give it two or three years, they put somebody new in that person's place and he would call you and he'd say, you know, who are you? I had somebody call me after I would you know, supposedly been in the program and all this other stuff. Head of that program calls me and says, who are you? Okay, well, uh, I wrote your name down. I'll, I'll get back to you. It's like starting over. <laughs> right. So, were you in the steersman program, or you did it sort of more traditionally? Um, as far as as far as my company at that time said, I was in the steersman program, um, and I, I guess they kind of groom you for that mentality, so to speak. Because when you get out of all of the schooling and get all of the certificates and things, you're told that you're on standby for this program. And then, you know, two years goes by and then they tell you, all right, you're officially in the program. You're still doing the same thing, decking and maybe steering when you can if the captain says it's all right, but you're in this program. It's like this fictitious gentleman's order. (laughs) And, um, You end up getting it, I guess, to answer your question, I ended up getting it traditionally, I guess, if you call it that. um, Forging out some sort of relationship 
AKA working your ass off for a captain and getting him to decide you're all right. And I'll, I'll steer you, you know? Subscribe now.